بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرض نزل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوامه وأنصاره السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we have to feel to continue our study of family and مهدوي تربية this is our fifth session we talked about challenges of آخر الزمان especially with respect to family life and now we want to see what guidance we receive from our um, sacred sources about this important topic one of the things that we find in teachings of Islam and in the Quran and Sunnah in particular is that a very important resource that we have, a very important backup that we have to face challenges of the Zaman is family and the other is community. And it is not accidental that these two are also under attack in different ways. I mentioned challenges to them in modern society and as explained in our hadith. Inshallah we will talk about these things more. So today we want to talk about necessity of having family in the center of our attention in Akhir al I'm not saying this is the only thing that it is to be in the center, but it has to be in the very, very center of our attention. I cannot emphasize more. Family life is very, very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Qu anfusakum wa ahalikum nara Wa quduha al-nar wa al-hijar Surah Al-Tahrim, verse 6 This ayah is general It's for mu'mineen in all times a mu'min is responsible for looking after his or her family. But when we move towards Akhir al-Zaman, this ayah becomes more and more applicable. Many verses of the Qur'an, I believe, not only they apply to people of our time and, you know, generations close to end of time, they actually apply more. This is in contrast to what we, you know, we thought that verse of the Quran are for the Muslims in that time. And yes, we can see whether there are things that we can bring to our time or not. No, this is not right. What is right understanding is that, as we have explained in the book lessons and knowing the Quran or series about Quranic sciences and understanding the Quran that Quran is meant for all generations. Quran is not for nas and duna nas. It's for all generations. And what I want to add today is that actually by the passage of time, Quran becomes more applicable. There are things that we can understand, we can benefit from the Quran that maybe were not available for Muslims 1,000 years ago. So, 
This ayah, which is a general ayah, who anfusakum wa ahdikum nara, by the passage of time, becomes more and more relevant and more and more applicable. Allama Tabatabai Radwanullah Ta'ala Alayh, in volume 19 of Al Mizan, page 689, uh, explains that maybe as a kind of requirement or implication that teach yourself, family, children, khair. Teach them what is good, what is useful, and educate them in order to save yourself. So it's a matter of preparation and education and tarbiyah. Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, Fakunu rahimakumullah min ahlas buyutikum ila aban zuhur amrana. This is in Irshad al Qulub by Daylami, also cited by the late Allah Majesty in Bihar al Anwar. Ahlas, which I mentioned in the end of last session, is a term that you find in many hadiths, is the plural form for health with sin. Hels, ahlas. Is used for something that you put a kind of mat that you put on the floor in your room. So that you, for example, sit, you eat, you pray. Uh, Sometimes it is translated in English as saddle blanket. So we find this expression commonly in our hadith. Even it is not only Shia hadith, we find that between us and Sunni hadith. That in Akhir al you should be like mats in your house. What does it mean? First of all, a mat in the house is not used outside. Secondly, a mat in the house is very uh, clean because you pray on it, you eat on it. Thirdly, which maybe is the most uh, outstanding uh, meaning, or implication is that don't expose yourself too much. Be at home unless there is good reason to go out. And this is not about, for example, going outside, for example, for buying something, or for example, for walking, you know, for example, say, oh, don't go for walking as much as you can, don't go for bath, you know. No, it means that as much as possible, prioritize working at home with family. When I say work, I don't mean necessarily job. It can be job, it can be a general way of life. It means don't treat family as a secondary issue. Family is your main concern. Family is your main priority. Inshallah, we will explain more. Just at the beginning, I wanted to say this so that you know it's not misunderstood. Okay. So, Amir al Mumin says, "Fakunu rahimakumullah min ahlas buyutikum ila avan zuhur am." May Allah's mercy be upon you. Be some of the mats of your home. Up to the time of Zuhur Amrana, appearance of our Akbar. Appearance, the appearance of Imam Zaman and Wilaya of Imam. So, Amir al is trying to save the Shia 
from getting involved in things which are not either good or even if they are good, they are not priority. One of the tasks of a leader is to save energy of his community. Give them tasks. Sometimes they need some exercise. Even if something is not necessary, sometimes for exercise they need to undertake tasks and finish it and you know learn and you know add to their you know ties, etc. But that is in a controlled way. Don't put all your energy in something which is not priority. A leader has to say, I mean everyone is aware that in future sometimes Shia are going to be involved in some movement, in some uprisings that might not be the best. In the series on history of Shia Islam, we saw that sometimes Shia did things that they didn't receive the instruction from Imams alayhi salam, and they thought it's a good cause, and then it was not successful, or was not, you know, completely successful. Sometimes maybe just changed one day, for example, um, helped in changing Omavid to Abbasids. I'm not saying only Shia did this, but in Shia community, we don't want to have even one case of this, alhamdulillah, or uh, The Shia community didn't get involved in bad things or in things which were, you know, obviously bad, but just in prioritizing, sometimes they didn't listen or get advice from Ahlul Bayt, and some Shias were involved in things that were not very productive for long-term success. In any case, Amir al Mumin says, remember, in my words, remember this as a guideline. فَكُونُوا رَحِمَّهُمْ اللَّهُ مِنْ أَحْلَاسِ بُيُوتِكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَوَانِ ظُهُورَ أَمْرَنَا This should be your general guideline. If something becomes obvious, if you know qualified leaders say that we should do this or that, that's fine. But we have to be very careful not to easily get involved in a socio-political movement uh, and forget our family, forget our community, forget our own self-building. Till inshallah we see the signs of the zuhur. Since our work would be preparation for Zuhur and after Zuhur. That is what we can understand from this. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam also said in a hadith that we have it in Basail al Shia in Bihar al Anwar in Al Ghaiba by Shaykh al Nu'mani. Kufu al Sinatakum, Walzamu Buyutakum. Keep your tongue. Don't be too vocal, especially when it comes to current affairs. Use your tongue for something which is obviously good, something which is, you know, helpful for moving humanity towards values, towards unity. But if you want to get into socio-political things which are normally divisive, you have to be very careful. The principle is not to talk unless there is hujjah. And hujjah is not you know, what comes to your mind as a person. Hujjah has to be something that is available, first of all, for collective assessment. What is your reason? You feel like it? Let's see, so you know, I feel this feeling is not hujjah. Something that you can say, you know, this is my reasoning. And then it has to be approved. It's not that every individual speaks and says, you know, I'm expressing myself. No, you are somehow, whether you like it or not, speaking as someone that is counted as a Shia, as a Muslim as a believer in God. So you have to be very careful. No one is saying just, this is the idea of this person. 
they will associate you with your faith, your mazhab, your community. So you have to be very careful. So don't speak unless it is proved, it is backed up by hujja, through rational means, that this is what you should say. I'm not saying not to fulfill your social responsibilities, but I'm saying don't rush. Don't also just keep silent. No, sometimes you have to speak. So you have to be always struggling to understand what Allah wants you to say or not to say. So one thing is kufu al The second is walzamu buyutakum. Imam Sadiq says you should be committed to your homes. You should be staying in a home, not only physically, but in your planning. Stay in your mind also in home. In the sense that home should be the center of your planning, center of your attention, center of your priority. Home is where your pleasure should be reaching the maximum, either your home or home of your relatives or mu'maneen, or masjid which is house of Allah, community centers which are places that we remember Allah. These are the places that we get maximum energy from and maximum pleasure from. So, إِلْزَمُوا بُيُوتَكُمْ Imam Jawad alayhi salam also is quoted as saying, and this hadith is actually available in Al-Hawil al-Fatawa by Suyuti and also Ayatollah Safi Gulbaybani and Muntakhab al asa But maybe the uh, earliest source that we have is in Al-Kafi by Shaykh Kulaymi Wali Atu. Wa qabla dhalika fitnatu sharran before coming of Imam Mahdi, there would be a very bad, severe fitna. I explained the meaning of fitna in one of the lectures in this series. Look at the intensity of the problem. Sometimes the person ends the day with Iman wakes up without Iman or starts the next day without Iman means overnight has lost Iman or yeah the other option is in the morning is mu'min by the night is kafir it means that generally speaking you lose Iman God forbids Gradually, little by little. So, makana adibat al-ladina asa'u su'a an kathabu ba'ayat Allah wa kanu biha yastahzum. If someone keeps doing bad things, then gradually it would lead to denial of divine communication and divine verses. But in akhiru zaman, this can happen very fast. It can happen over a day or over a night, not to commit a sin only, to lose Iman altogether. Sometimes one conversation, sometimes one encounter, sometimes one, I don't know, clip, one meeting can stop you from being more. We have to be very careful. Yom Rajul. So, first of all, as I said, Imam says, Wa qabla zalika fitna to sharran, yom sir rajulu mu'minan wa yusbahu kafiran, wa yusbahu mu'minan wa yumsi kafiran. Faman adra kazalika zaman. Whoever witnesses that time, fal yattaqillah. Must have taqwa. Taqwa is a great protection great support, great immunity. وَلْيَكُنْ أَحْلَاسَ بَيْتِهِ And should be one of the 
mass of his home. It means that we would be safer in family and we need to keep our family safe so that we can be safe outside. Like for example an army, they need to keep the command room very protected. That would be the safest place because if the command room is damaged, all the troops will be losing guidance and support. They will be finished. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam again, this hadith, we have another hadith from Imam Sadiq, this again from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. فَإِذَا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فَلْزَمُوا أَحْلَاسَ بُيُوتِكُمْ حَتَّى يَظْهَرَ الطَّاهِرُ بْنُ الطَّاهِرِ الْمُطَحَّرُ ذُو الْطَيْبَةِ When that time comes, be mat of your houses till the pure, the son of the pure and purified reappear, the one who has taiba occultation. Imam Ali also says, وَاتَّخِذُوا سَمَامِعَكُمْ بُيُوتَكُمْ وَعَبْضُوا عَلَى مِثْلِ جَمَرِ الْغَضَى وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا In the time of Gaiba, turn your houses into Sawama, like monasteries, places for ibadah, for reflection, for zikr, full of light. You know, one of the things that we have in our hadith, I mentioned in the series of the Quran, is that although we should do our wajibat in masjid as much as possible, or community center, you know, do salatul jama'ah, we have to have lots of things together, dua, aza, etc., celebrations, lots of things together. But at the same time, لا تعتلوا بيوتكم. You should not do every ibadah outside. No, home is a shrine, and in shrine you need to do ibadah. The best thing to keep charging this shrine with light is ibadah. But ibadah is zik, ibadah is salat, is recitation of Quran. Ibadah is the time that you spend with family, looking at each other with love. Even eating together in family for the sake of love, for the sake of Allah, it's Ibadah. Cooking, washing, cleaning, it's Ibadah. If you wash masjid, it's Ibadah. If you wash your home, it's also Ibadah. If you have this mentality about home. Masjid is our common home, and we have individual homes, but all are connected and connecting us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Amir al alayhi salam says, وَاتَّخِذُوا سَوَامِعَكُمْ بُيُوتَكُمْ Choose as your monastery, as place of worship, your homes. The advice that we have is that we do what about in masjid and we do nawafil at home. So anything which is a uh, matter of mustahab, like recitation, like salat, many things we can do at home without, of course, undermining our masajid or our community center. As I said, we do salat al jamaah there every day, a few times. We do azah, we do dua, etc. But at home also. Not one or the other, no, both. And then Amir al muminin advises about being careful about your tongue 
and then remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in advance. Now, two things may come to mind. One may say, okay, now I understood from these many hadiths, which are not the only ones, but just some of the hadiths, that from now I need to only work for my family. I should not get into anything outside or not do any socio-political thing at all. No. Islam doesn't advise us to isolate ourselves. Islam doesn't, in general, maybe for some point, it's at some point, it's necessary even to isolate himself. But in general, in large scale, mu'minin should be active in society. Otherwise, the society will be left for those who have no iman. We need to be active. But the thing is that we need to prioritize our families, our homes, then our community, and then do those things which are not confrontational as much as possible. Things which are not divisive, things which don't mean that you have to take a stance against some other people. For those kind of things, you have to be very careful. You need guidance from reliable, wise, learned, spiritual leaders. So there are, I can say there are three levels. Working at home, always. Doing something good, like charity work, educational work, etc which would not be divisive outside home when doesn't lead to compromise about home, that is also good. But if you want to get into something that would put you or your community under risk and attack because it is confrontational, you have to be very, very careful. So we don't understand from this hadith that we have to abandon altogether all social work. No, this is not Islamic understand. Allah al Majlisi Rizwanullah Ta'ala Alayhi He says Ahl to be ahlas al buyud la'allahu chanayatun an al tawadu wa adam al tashahur of the nas. He says maybe it means that you should be humble and don't become famous, don't expose yourself too much. You know, keep low profile. Generally speaking, this is what Allah the Majlis says. About significance of family and community, we have lots of things that support our understanding of Ahlas. For example, Imam Badr alayhi salam said, Tazavaru fi buyutikum. This is very much connected to the idea of social relaya. All these are well connected to each other. These are, you know, uh, different pieces of the same puzzle. Tazavaru fi buyutikum. If I keep my home a blessed place, you keep your home a blessed place, then when we visit each other, we have family relations, we connect these blessed places and they become more blessed. This is uh, amazing, as we said about Barakah in working together. We have explained this. So one plus one is not two always. When a moment is working separately, another moment working separately, when they work together, it's not just one plus one. When they work together, one plus one becomes maybe four, maybe twenty, maybe hundred. Also, one house is a house of faith, another house also. When they are connected, it's not just one plus one. Tazavaru fi buyutikum fa inna zalika. 
I don't know how Imam Bakr could emphasize more. It's very powerful. Imam says, visit each other's home. This is the life of our affair. Amir Umi said, Awan amrana. This amr is very much repeated in our hadith, which I can you know summarize it as wilaya, especially wilaya which will inshallah manifest in coming of Imam Zaman and his governance. So Imam Bakr says, your mutual visitation, your tazawur is hayatun la amrana. It's the life of our affair. If you don't connect with each other, this affair is going to die. Rahimallahu abdan ahya amrana. May Allah have mercy upon the servant who revives our affair. By what? There are different things. One of them is this visitation. I have another hadith to share with you. Um, it's not in the book, but I found it in another book, especially for our uh, cultural learning circle brothers and sisters that know the significance of Mubahasa. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Ablig mawalin as salam. Say our salam to our Shia. Wa awsahim bi taqadallah. And advise them to have taqwa. And then goes on, and then Imam said, Wa an yatalaqaw fi buyutahim. To meet each other in their homes. And they should discuss science of religion. So when you, all Mu'maneen and cultural learning circle brothers and sisters, when you do Mubahasa, it's not just part of our learning process, it's to respect the advice of Imam Sadiq and other Imams that they expect us, especially in this time, to do these things as a revival of their affair. Imam says, وَأَنْ يَتَلَاقَوْ فِي بُيُوتِهِمْ وَلِيَتَفَاوَضُ عِلْمَ الدِّينِ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ حَيَاطٌ لَأَمْرِنَا Very close to what we have from Imam Bakr Rahimallahu abdan ahya amrana. This is the life of our affair. May Allah have mercy upon the servant who revives our affair. You visit each other's home, you do mubahasa. But don't underestimate this. This is ahya amran. Ahl al alayhim as -salam. And then look at this amazing, all these hadiths are amazing, you know. It's like you go to a garden, you see this flower is beautiful, you look at the other, it's very beautiful. You cannot say which one is more beautiful, they're all very beautiful. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith which is quoted by Daybani in Irshad al Qulub and Allah made it in the Havl Anwar, he says, لا تعلم العلم لتماروا به السفهاء وتجادلوا به العلماء ولتصرفوا وجوه الناس إليكم. Don't seek knowledge in order to discuss and argue. Keep arguing with sufaha, those who are not in a very rational, or to argue with ulama, or to attract people faces toward yourself. Seeking knowledge should not be for bad intentions. With your words, with your 
knowledge that you learn and share, you can seek and you taboo, you should seek what is in the law. When I can seek something near Allah, why I should be spending my time in doing things for the sake of worldly gain? فَإِنَّهُ يَدُومُ وَيَبْقَى وَيَنْفَدُ مَا سِوَاهُ What is in the law? The Quran says, وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Here, the Rasulullah said, فَإِنَّهُ يَدُومُ وَيَبْقَى وَيَنْفَدُ مَا سِوَاهُ Whatever is with Allah remains and used. Everything else is going to finish, expire. كُونُوا يَنَابِيعَ الْحِكْمَةِ Be the springs of wisdom, masabih al huda, lanterns of guidance, ahlas al buyut, the mats of homes, suruj al layl, the lights of the night, judud al qulub, your heart must be new, fresh. When it comes to your clothes. You shouldn't have the best of you know, clothes. Yes, clean. Not something looked down upon you. But it can be old. Old and clean. Yeah? You can keep using, if you use something with good you know, care, for years. So you don't need to have you know, always new clothes. But new heart. وَعُرَفُونَ فِي أَهْلِ السَّمَاءِ وَتَخْفَوْنَ فِي أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ You should be known to the people of heaven and be concealed among people of earth. What does it mean? It means don't go for fame first. Secondly, as much as possible, keep low profile. Yes, sometimes maybe you need, you know, to be known, for example, you know, inside community, or sometimes even outside community, some people need to be known to be acting as bridges, etc. But our main principle is to concentrate our on our internal efforts and don't draw unnecessary attention to yourself or your community. If you bring attention, it should be in the form of proper introduction, educating people about us so that they don't think negatively to do some collaboration, etc. But just to bring attention to yourself or to your community without having any particular aim? No. So, this hadith from Rasulullah emphasizes on several things. It needs one lecture. But briefly, learning has to be part of, has to be center of our attention. This learning should be collective. This learning should be aiming at wisdom, not just theory. Wisdom has to be practical in nature. Our heart, so the spirituality is very important, our heart should be fresh. Meaning, it has life, it has vitality, it's not uh, weakened or damaged by wrong ideas or vicious traits of character, etc. Commitment to home, ahlas, and keeping low profile unless there is good reason to be otherwise. So we need to be very careful and alert in Ashura Zaman. We should have our own plans, we should not take any risks, we should not just go by what you know the current is, we should not go by just what media says or by what technology offers. We need to have our plans fixed and checked and implemented. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us in understanding 
the challenges and also great opportunities of this time and benefit from every opportunity for making ourselves and our families, our community, and the whole humanity, inshallah, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to all people who are ill, to give khajar of all mu'min and mu'minat, and to send rahmah and ma'fra to all mu'min and mu'minat who have passed away. We ask Allah to bless our parents and our parents and teachers and whoever has any right upon us. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.